Good morning from the National Weather Service in Raleigh, North Carolina. My name is Aaron Swiggett, meteorologist here, and I will be providing the uh, routine weekly briefing for Central North Carolina covering the period from Monday, the 27th, that's today, uh, through Sunday, which is now April 2nd, which is kind of hard to believe that we're already up in seven days going to be into April. All right, so let's take a look at the upcoming weather pattern. Today, uh, we're still having a cold front that is still west of our area, uh, but that is expected to move into our area today. And there will be a little bit of instability to work with, a little bit of uh, winds aloft, some shear. Uh, so we may see some isolated uh, showers, thunderstorms, uh, even producing some hail potentially as well today, uh, this afternoon. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on that for this afternoon. And then Tuesday, uh, we should have an area of uh, light to maybe moderate rain, uh, light rain, uh, not necessarily showery activity, but uh, it's a light rain that develops on Tuesday and it kind of just develops kind of right over top of us and then spreads eastward. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a graphic here. Uh, I was running out of space on my graphics here, uh, but you can uh, imagine that uh, on Tuesday, uh, most likely during uh, the late afternoon, evening into the overnight period on Tuesday as it kind of progresses through our area. But then behind that, uh, we'll have some high pressure building in on the uh, upper middle graphic there uh, labeled Wednesday uh, with some high pressure building into uh, the Ohio Valley, into the mid-Mississippi Valley that'll spread over our area and promoting dry conditions. And then as that slips offshore, uh, you can see there on Friday how that uh, big high pressure is shifted off the Carolina coast. Uh, that will promote warming temperatures through uh, mid to late week. Uh, and then Saturday, uh, why I wanted to put in uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is that we'll have another, yes, another weekend system that tracks into the eastern U.S. out of a cold front. Uh, and we may start to see some rumblings of a, uh, a more significant severe event across the mid-Mississippi Valley uh, Friday into Saturday. So I wanted to highlight that here and uh, progress it eastward for maybe what we would experience here. Uh, although it is pretty far out. So we'll dive into that here in a bit. All right, so what about for the precipitation totals? Uh, for today, you can kind of see some, uh, mostly some light rain, uh, but they'll probably be more isolated than that. Uh, you might really see pockets of some of those rain totals uh, between a tenth and a quarter of an inch uh, as isolated showers and thunderstorms develop. It's not necessarily gonna be as widespread as what you see there. And then for Tuesdays, you can see a little bit higher totals, uh, looking at a tenth to maybe even upwards of half an inch possible, um, but maybe closer to the uh, quarter of an inch as opposed to the upper end of that darker green color that you see in the upper middle graphic on Tuesday between Greensboro and Raleigh, uh, probably closer to that quarter of an inch than half an inch. And then the high pressure builds in Wednesday and Thursday, so you can see the dry conditions there. And then the uh, widespread heavy rainfall that's out across the Ohio Valley into the Tennessee Valley on Friday uh, with not a whole lot over us yet. And then the five-day total there, uh, mostly an accumulation between today and Tuesday. Okay, so if uh, you haven't seen these graphics before, this is a new tool that we have access here uh, in operations uh, that basically is an accumulation of a hundred different models. Uh, and then shows, and we have a whole bunch of different parameters that we can look at, but I wanted to start off by highlighting uh, the probability of uh, precipitation amounts. So on the left-hand side, you see the probability of a tenth of an inch or greater, which is what we forecast as uh, a pop forecast or a probability of precipitation forecast, where you usually measure of a hundred, hundredth or more. And then the right graphic, it's slightly altered to where it's uh, showing the probability of a tenth of an inch or greater. And then the colors you can see there as you approach the yellows, uh, the oranges and yellows and uh, the br bright yellows, uh, you have higher probability of those, uh, uh, the, the uh, rainfall total there of a uh, hundredth of an inch or greater. And then same thing for the low probabilities or the, the uh, purple, blue, uh, navy colors are a low probability of those thresholds being reached. So you can kind of see this is the graphic from uh, Friday 8 p.m. until Saturday 2 a.m. Uh, we may have some low end probabilities approaching the triad there of a hundredth of an inch or greater, the left image, and then um, 
the probabilities of a tenth of an inch or greater really confined uh, west of the Appalachian Mountains across the Tennessee and Ohio valleys there. So what we're going to do is we're going to step forward in six hour chunks here uh, as that cold front approaches. Uh, so as we step forward now, we're looking at Saturday 2 a.m. to Saturday 8 a.m. And again, the probabilities uh, of a tenth of an inch or greater are on the right and of a hundredth of an inch or greater on the left. And you can kind of see there how uh, they're mostly confined to the fairly similar areas, uh, kind of reaching into the triad of uh, maybe the, some of those medium probabilities of 30 to 50 percent reaching towards the triad. And for the uh, left image there, and then on the right, still some really low probabilities uh, across the triad. Uh, so as you can kind of see as we step through here, uh, the probabilities of those lower end amounts where we see uh, you're getting an accumulating uh, precipitation really stay fairly high. Uh, but as you take a peek over on the right-hand image where you're showing a tenth of an inch or greater, those probabilities remain very low. So now we're looking at Saturday 2 p.m. to Saturday 8 p.m., and those probabilities are really starting to drop off there, uh, even with the uh, hundredth of an inch and the tenth of an inch. So now we are at Saturday 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. So I'll back up so you can kind of see the progression of that front and the pro um, how the probabilities change. So you can see ending 2 a.m., ending at 8 a.m., ending at 2 p.m., ending Saturday 8 p.m., and then Sunday 2 a.m. So I really wanted to highlight this because what this is really showing is that there's higher probabilities of some low end totals of maybe a, a hundredth to a tenth of an inch, but those higher end totals in a six hour chunk have really been really low. So what that kind of tells us here is that we may see our, most of the models are hinting at those hundred model members are highlighting that we may see some light rain as that front passes through and is weakening with time as it moves east of the mountains. So most of the models seem to be hinting at that kind of solution. All right, and then that is uh, 2 a.m. on Sunday there with all the higher probabilities shifting uh, well east and off the coast of the Carolinas there. All right, so back to uh, some normal graphics here for a bit. Uh, so this is the uh, WPC excessive rainfall. Uh, all of the totals that we have for today and tomorrow are, are very light, so we're not expecting any kind of risk for flash flooding there. And then severe thunderstorms. Uh, so I kind of hinted this uh, at it a little bit, uh, but you can see on Monday we are highlighting that light green for thunderstorms. Uh, so that's mostly because uh, the confidence in seeing significant hail or uh, um, severe cr severe criteria criteria hail. Uh, is fairly low, uh, but we could see some isolated uh, showers and thunderstorms uh, that could produce hail uh, kind of between that 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. time frame uh, for today. And then as the light rain moves in uh, Tuesday, not expecting any severe there, but you can see Friday how there's already a 30% area across the mid-Mississippi Valley there. Uh, so that's going to be uh, what's going uh, to be talked about most likely as another uh, widespread severe event on Friday. And then that system will then track into uh, the eastern United States on Saturday. Uh, but again, predictability with that system is too low, uh, highlighted in the graphics I showed you earlier of those probabilities uh, as it weakens with time as it progressed east of the mountains there. All right, here is the uh, looking a little bit farther out, 8 to 14 day outlook, courtesy of the Climate Prediction Center and uh, highlighting in the April 3rd through April 9th time frame, uh, 40 to 50 percent chances above normal for temperatures and kind of near to slightly above normal uh, probabilities for precipitation. And uh, for reference, uh, the normal highs, the average high temperature from the 3rd through the 9th, all of those days averaged together, the average high temperature during that time for Raleigh, North Carolina is 70 degrees, with a normal low of around 45 degrees. So we are now approaching the normal uh, temperatures uh, of above uh, or nearing 70 degrees. So we've, we've crossed yet another threshold, uh, highlighting that we are now getting well into spring. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. So a quick little weather summary, chance of isolated showers and thunderstorms uh, along the cold front this afternoon and uh, widespread rain develops over North Carolina uh, 
uh, Tuesday night. Dry conditions behind that, warming up into the mid to late week, and then yet another weekend system uh, bringing potential for some rain, although there's uh, seems like to be quite a bit of uncertainty in the strength and magnitude of that storm uh, as it approaches us here in central North Carolina uh, on the weekend. And then again, the only hazardous impacts that we're expecting at this time are some couple thunderstorms uh, with the possibility of the main hazard being um, hail uh, and highlighted between that 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. time frame. All right, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the questions box now. Thank you so much for joining.